Thanks. Um, so, this me, Stuart Bryant, um, and I'm going to be talking about where to detect, review, and metal detector surveys on developed pilot excavations. But at the outset, I'd like to say I feel a bit of a fraud because, first of all, I'm not an artifact specialist. Um, my interest is more in settlement and landscape. And I got involved in the Rome Rural Settlement Project, although I didn't actually, wasn't actually on it, didn't do any of the work as an, on an advisory capacity because of that landscape interest. However, um, uh, also, uh, my talk is going to be based on the work of those others uh, in the Rome Rural Settlement Project, particularly Tom Brindle, who was on the Pool of Antiquities scheme but, um, in an early, earlier life. And, um, but I think it's important uh, the work that the Rome Rural Settlement Project have done with artefacts, um, which is now published, um, for the understanding of Roman um, uh, settlement and landscape, particularly um, the location of Roman sites. And uh, I wish to first make sure I press the right button. Scroll down. Scroll down. Hold it. Uh, that's it. Too far. So I'm a bit challenged with the. Uh... So I think we should be just. Uh, just that one. Okay, got it. Okay. Well, I'll talk now a bit about the Rome Rural Settlement Project. Um, it's the most thorough, um, detailed, and systematic study of the outputs of development led arch archaeological investigations since 1990. Um, there are about 2,600 sites with significant excavated evidence were recorded, and the database of these is on the ADS website. I recommend that. It's very good, very accessible, and there's uh, comprehensive, well-structured data on each of those sites. There's also three hefty published monographs, which I think are essential <coughs> reading for anybody interested in Roman rural settlement. Um, and I think it, it, it has transformed our understanding of Roman rural settlement in England and Wales. Uh, the thing I'm going to talk about today is mainly the methodological strand of the project, which was funded by Historic England. They also funded a significant proportion of the wider project, but they had a dedicated methodological strand, which was quite far uh, cited. And I'm going to look at its implications for archaeological practice. Um, importantly, most of the project's conclusions regarding methodology are probably, were not probably unexpected, but importantly, they are now supported by really robust uh, empirical evidence. Um, before looking at the methodological study, it's worth um, having a glance at this, which is one of the many outputs of the uh, Rome Rural Settlement Project, which is a map showing the impact of developer-funded archaeology. It shows some other things as well, but it's one of the best maps which it shows the, the impact of developer-funded archaeology on, on archaeology in, in England and Wales. Uh, you can see the first map on the left. Um, that shows really the uh, collective endeavour of a whole century or more um, in terms of uh, the evidence of Roman rural settlement uh, from excavations. And you can see there's a high concentration in um, Wessex and the South Midlands and a, th a thin scatter elsewhere. The middle map is really just before PPG 16 and represents um, the post-war housing boom. Um, and you can see there's been a dramatic increase um, but there are still areas with, which are fairly thin, where there wasn't so much development. And then you've got the 25 years, so you've got 100 years, then 40 years, and the 25 years up to 2014, and a, and a, and a, and a dramatic increase in the uh, number of sites, so that the, almost the, the green has disappeared. Um, and this represents all of the uh, excavated Roman rural settlement. The map also shows that, that, in, that dramatic increase in understanding areas where we thought there wasn't much Roman settlement. Uh, we know that there is a lot, and generally, one of the, one of the big stories of the past 30 years is um, the dramatic increase in, uh, and some of it unexpected, in the, the um, extent and, and number of settlements, for particularly the later prehistoric and the Roman period. And this map shows that very clearly. Moving on to the methodological project. I'm going to talk about five pieces of analysis that the project, particularly Tom Brindle, carried out. And this is the first really looking at the relationship between the size of excavations and um, uh, the uh, likely evidence of coins. And uh, there's a couple of things to point out. First of all, it's a fairly linear relationship between sites on the left, which are less than one hectare, 
And when look at the numbers there, it's 2,440 they're looking at. So it's a big sample. Um, the, the middle group, 1 to 2 hectares, 2 to 7, and uh, going down to 103 for 2 to 3 hectares. But you can see that nice linear relationship. So the bigger the area you excavate, the more chance you have of finding coins. Um, something, you know, you would expect that, but it's really good, robust data to show that it's true. This is also very interesting, a simple analysis, which probably took years of person times to do, estimating the areas of every single excavation and plotting them uh, and putting them on the boundary of uh, the regions they've used for the Rome Rural Southern Project. And you can see it's largely determined by the size of developments, but the figure in the south and the east is getting towards three times that of the north and west and Wales. And um, that, together with um, uh, the, uh, the slide I showed previously about the likelihood of finding coins, demonstrates that it's going to be more difficult uh, for the average excavation to find coins in the north and the west than it is in the south and the east. Um, third piece of, of um, analysis is really looking at the impact of metal detecting surveys on the recovery of coins. Again, big numbers. Um, coins were recovered from 44% of all excavated Roman sites. That's the complete data set, 3,600. But for the 8%, that's 297, with metal detecting service surveys, this was exactly double, 88%. And you see a couple of slides. The one on the left, on the right, is, is my first excavation when I worked for Hertfordshire and um, we found quite a big haul, two and a half thousand coins and uh, an early example of uh, the need for systematic metal detecting on the site, that was back in 1986. Dreadful archives. Um, so uh, third, um, the next piece of, of analysis is really looking at um, the ratio of um, additional coins which are found from um, surveys as opposed to those found in the excavation itself. And you can see uh, in the south and east the ratio is 3 to 1 um, and it's re effectively 1 to 1 um, for the, these mega regions, the north and Wales, southwest and northeast because um, the northeast is biased to some extent by some exceptionally rich finds. Um, again, not unexpected. Um, but there's really robust evidence to support it that um, there are basically a lot more coins in the south and east. And um, actually the detecting surveys are very valuable and I'll explain why they're potentially more valuable than the north and west and the south and east. Um, so, um, then uh, he looked at uh, regional differences in the proportion of sites with systematic metal detecting. And you can see there's a, a gradation from uh, the east of England, central west and central belt, which are the areas um, with massive amounts of Roman archaeology and coins, um, which are the areas that have been chosen for um, undertaking the most um, systematic surveys. Whereas in the north and the southwest, you can see um, portions are much, much lower. So um, in the north, it's seven times... Uh, less chance of, of getting a, uh, uh, a, a, a from, from evidence in the past um, a, a systematic metal detecting survey than in the south and the east. Again, um, figures which are not necessarily surprising, although the, the difference, the scale of the difference between the east and the north is, is quite dramatic, I think. So um, then moving on to looking at the implications of this. Um, bias against finding coins and other metal artefacts in the north and the west of England compared with the south and east. First of all, the size of excavations in the south and east is two to three times that of the north and west, and size clearly matters when it comes to finding coins and other metal artefacts. The percentage of development sites with systematic metal detecting surveys is between three and seven times higher in the south and the east than the north and the west. And there are many more times more times more coins in the south and east than the north and west. And I'm just going to quote from Tom, 
um, uh, in his conclusions to the um, his article, which is um, there's method I forgot to say the methodological. Um, discussion papers, which are on the Cotswold Archaeology website, there's eight of them covering different subjects, and a lot of what I've, I've said is, is based on Tom's um, paper on artifacts. And this is his conclusion on this subject: where metal artifacts such as coins and brooches are recovered from rural sites in the north, they can be of fundamental importance for contributing to our understanding of various aspects of the rural economy, social status, identity, and native military interaction. Given the pressure on resources in commercial archaeology, the admission of metal detecting surveys detecting from sites in the north may seem justifiable. However, it further, it further increases the bias against the recovery of metal objects from rural settlements in the north. This is of importance because if coins and other metal objects are present on rural settlements in the north, they are likely to be of greater significance than if they were recovered in the south or east. So, in summing up, I think the value of, of undertaking systematic metal detecting on development sites has been clearly demonstrated from a national study of all excavated Roman sites. This value is paradoxically likely to be the greatest in the regions with the least number of coins. There is a clear imbalance in the proportion of excavations with detecting surveys between north and west on one side and the south and east. The recent project in Cheshire, which uh, Vicky Nash will be talking about shortly, is however beginning to address the imbalance and has produced interesting results. The fact that this project, this is the Cheshire project, and again Vicky, I won't say much about it, but I think that the fact that this project has been subject to independent academic peer review is also to be welcomed and, and complements the statistical evidence from the Roman Rural Settlement Project. And I think it may be a first in the profession for a methodological study to be independently peer-reviewed uh, and published in an academic journal. So I think it's to be lauded for that alone. So finally, the question to responsible detectors where to detect could be answered by in the north and west, where the relative archaeological significance of Roman metalwork recovered is arguably the highest. Yeah.